Hi, welcome back to whatever this is. I'm Morgan, I'm the lead brewer here at Bear Bottle Brewing, and we're gonna be talking about Dark Cosmos today, which is our new black lager. As far as the name, like Dark Cosmos tend to have a lot big space vibe with a lot of our beers. Kind of has a bit of like a Twilight Zone-y sort of, but why is this lager so dark? What allows it to be so dark? It shouldn't taste this way, it's too smooth to be this dark, you know, sort of thing. Imagine if you will, an announcer you can barely understand. He refers to it, but you're not quite sure what he said. He seems to be eating something, or perhaps he's a little drunk. It's remotely possible that he just said something about the scary door. This is a style we've been wanting to do for a while now. The last one we did was Haunted House around this time last year. Since we did that, we've been just kind of itching to bring it back. So really stoked that we were able to get this out there to you guys. Take a look here. It's got this really pretty color. When you get down to the last few sips, it kind of has this like ruby amber thing that kind of catches the light a little bit. As you can see, like right when you first pour it, it is pretty black through and through. So yeah, check it out, pretty pretty. And yeah, kind of right off the bat, it doesn't have that very like roasty astringent black coffee and cigarettes sort of harshness that I tend to get with a lot of American dark beers. There is a little bit of a distinction between this style and a Schwartz beer. I'm sure there's gonna be somebody in the comments who just reams me for this. I wouldn't say that this is necessarily a Schwartz beer, which would be the German black lager style. We used kind of a blend of malts that we have in house. In particular, this was Salzgitter Pils malt, which was the base malt, which comes to us from Prairie Malt. It is a German varietal grown in Canada. Um, so we use that as the base. Um, however, we did use a uh, Weyermann Munich malt and Weyermann Carafa too, to give it that color and to give it a little bit more body and flavor. The first time we made a black lager, it's Haunted House. That was Nick Bartlett, who's over at Buckwild Brewing. And he was the first one who who came up with the idea of using dark malts later in the mashing process. He did it slightly differently where he actually steeped them in a separate vessel overnight and we kind of pumped that chilled dark wort into the kettle as we were boiling um, to give it color there, which I think did a really good job of giving that beer color. It just took a long ass time for us to get it in there. So this was kind of like a bit of a compromise in just adding the dark malts in right before the Vorloff so that we could still get a lot of color out of them but not pull any astringency or any tannins out of the malt. This has a lot of almost, I would say kind of like a black cherry vibe when I'm first smelling it. In the flavor, it's very toffee, very rich, lots of dark fruits, namely kind of like fig and like a little bit of graham cracker. So I kind of almost get this like fig newton-y sort of flavor with it. Relatively high carbonation, but like it's so smooth, you really don't feel the crispness of it too much. Yeah, let me take another sip, that was really fucking good. It's funny, I was drinking this beer this weekend and I took a sip right after I drank a cup of coffee and the coffee was so bitter and this was so not bitter and tannic by comparison that it felt like I was drinking a cherry Dr. Pepper. So. It's, you know, it, it is kind of like on that, not so much sweet level, but like you do kind of pick up more of those fruity notes from the hops. Normally with a lot of our lagers, we tend to stick to German hops. This one, we used Super Zazer, which is an American varietal. Not really by design. This is kind of a fuck it, we ball moment. We didn't really have too much in house to really dedicate to this beer. So we needed a hop that had high alpha that could get us there bitterness wise and still remain balanced and still kind of give us a little bit more character than we're used to getting with just regular saws. So Super Zazer kind of contributes this interesting little like American fruit forward hop flavor to it. As I said before, with having the dark malts go in at the later portion of the mashing process, we don't get as much astringency or as much smokiness or as much just like roasty quality that's kind of overbearing and covering up a lot of these um, hop aromas and flavors. So you kind of actually taste a lot of the hop character in the black lager, which is not something you get too often. It is awesome. It is super, super drinkable, which is a very big buzzword. And I think there's a bit of a tendency to approach these beers and think like, wow, this is a very, very drinkable dark beer. And I think we're kind of in a place where we're trying to get people to say, wow, this is a very, very light beer that has these really pretty dark qualities to it. And try to bring out more nuanced, prettier aspects of the dark malts. You know, things that we tend to expect just from regular lager in black lager as well. And I think adding our, our dark malts, our Carafa 2 in at the later stage has definitely allowed us to achieve that. So yeah, I'm pretty stoked on it. 